Hi everybody. In this video, we are going to discuss the examination of abdomen. And we'll try to go through some videos also. How to examine the abdomen. Few methods and important points regarding the examination of abdomen. As far as the examination of abdomen is concerned, first just try to understand this concept. This is a patient and the resident is standing on the right side of the patient as you can see here. And the abdomen of any patient the ideal exposure should be from the bilateral nipple area superiorly and inferiorly ideally up to the mid thigh here for the privacy purpose we are just having this sheet here if privacy is maintained as that is there if you are examining the patient in the examination room as this is the video that is going to be available in the public domain that's where I am putting here this sheet otherwise whenever required it should be the patient should be exposed up to the mid thigh part after explaining the whole thing to the patient obviously few important points we must take care whenever we are going to examine any patient first of all the consent of examination you must introduce yourself to the patient you must explain the benefits of the proposed examination to the patient you must take the consent from him or her and an attendant should be available and preferably he or she should not be the relative of the patient preferably if there is no choice you can take the relative also as an attendant and take all proper aseptic precautions and you must explain the advantages of this examination how it is going to help you in making the diagnosis and further management plan to the patient and have human touch with the patient examine the patient gently don't be in a hurry these are the important points one should take care of while examining a patient so first of all as here you can see the abdomen these two vertical lines passing through the mid clavicular plane superiorly and passing through the mid inguinal point inferiorly the mid inguinal point is basically the midpoint of the line that is joining the asis with the pubic symphysis an imaginary line and the midpoint of this is mid inguinal point right there is another point here midpoint of the inguinal ligament this is the midpoint of inguinal ligament and inguinal ligament extends from this asis up to the pubic tubercle somewhat situated here so mid inguinal point is usually medial to the midpoint of inguinal ligament right what is the importance of mid inguinal point just 
deep to this mid inguinal point lies the external ileic vessels and that is being continuing as femoral vessels just beneath this mid inguinal point and what is the importance of midpoint of the inguinal ligament midpoint of the inguinal ligament just superior to this around 2 to 2.5 cm there is presence of deep inguinal ring and medial to this deep inguinal ring is inferior epigastric artery right so these are the important clinical significance of these two points the mid inguinal point used in reason division of the abdomen and another point midpoint of the inguinal ligament clinical importance i have told all of you and there are other two horizontal lines this the upper one is the cranial one is trans pyloric plane and this the lower one is trans tubercular plane this trans pyloric plane is also known as addison's plane addison's plane roughly if we are going to draw an imaginary line between this suprasternal notch and coming up to the pubic symphysis this trans pyloric plane is almost midway between these points and perpendicular to the line joining these two points this was first explained by addison's that's why this is also known as addison's plane so midway between pubic symphysis and suprasternal notch now again if the distance between this transpyloric plane and the pubic symphysis again there is the same line in the mid plane the halfway the midway the line that is bisecting this distance distance between the transpyloric plane and this pubic symphysis this will be the line and that's why and this line is this is passing through the tubercles of the ileic bone that's where this is known as trans tubercular plane right this one is asis and roughly about 5 cm behind this on ileic crest there is ileic tubercle bilaterally right and left and the line passing through it is known as trans tubercular plane these four lines divide the abdomen in nine regions or nine segments this one is right hypochondrium this one is epigastrium this one is left hypochondrium this one is left lumbar the umbilical the right lumbar the right ileic fossa hypogastrium left ileic fossa so whenever there is a question how many quadrants the four there are four quadrants okay so and how many reasons there are nine reasons or nine segments of the abdomen so this you must take care these are the four one two three four four quadrants of the abdomen the two lines passing through the umbilicus vertical and horizontal this is the subcostal plane right so first of all let's go through the videos made by one of my resident one of my favorite resident and i would like to thank him dr archit so one by one let's go through it and then we'll discuss later on yes
of the organs in the abdomen today let's start with liver now liver is mainly situated behind the just try to observe it is not present subcostally but mm. a liver gets enlarged or due to other causes a liver may be felt in the subcostal region on the right side now liver in case it is enlarged it is called as hepatomegaly but if it is present subcostally but the liver span is normal then it is also known as a pseudo hepatomegaly now how do we feel for the lower border of the liver we'll start palpating from the right iliac fossa now start palpating from the right iliac fossa from the palmar surface of the hand or from the palmar border it is never done from the tip of the uh, tips of the fingers because it will cause pain it is done every time when the patient expires so on expiration i'll ask the i'll dip my fingers into the abdomen to feel for the liver pole now for, with every expiration i am going from the right iliac fossa to the right hypochondrium now in case i am able to feel a liver border a firm border below the subcostal region on the right side in the right hypochondrium is a marking of a liver border now in this case i am not able to feel this is the subcostal margin on the right side now in what cases am i able to feel for the liver margin in case the patient has hepatomegaly that is the liver is enlarged due to any liver causes or in case of pseudo hepatomegaly like in earlier it is seen in cases of either a lung pathology like pleural effusion or consolidation or uh, cases where atelectasis like uh, emphysema uh, emphysema where the lung is pushed downwards liver is getting pushed downwards and hence it is present subcostally but the liver is not enlarged or due to abdominal causes like in cases of chelidity syndrome where we know the bowel loops extend above the liver in the subdiaphragmatic area leading to shifting of the liver downwards also in cases of subphrenic abscess it can lead to subcostal margin being palpated now in the next video we'll discuss about how to measure the liver span and the upper border of the liver thank you archit so regarding this examination we'll discuss in detail in the next video thank you